Welcome to Poetry for Peace, a podcast that finds the light in verses. I'm Stacy Eyrick, a mother, poet, and singer, and this is season four, A New Dawn. Redecorating. In the living room, letters spell love in bright cherry red, the color of lipstick mothers wore in the 80s, of dragon's blood snowballs, of a shade we once favored when dressing to go out and dance. But the color in this space feels more like blue-gray, like the spray of ocean salt, like the touch of rainfall, like something not as tidy, not as shiny. What does the world know of these letters, of this room, this family, this moment, of this, our hearts? Let's paint it in lush purples, deep greens and wavy blues, Fill it with ripples, zigzags, silly stripes, funky dots. Break apart its letters, build them anew. Pull it wide open, create a nest of its fragments. Then maybe that thing with wings will fly in. Perch upon this new love, 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 love in all its messy, magnificent, multi-splendored glory. Perhaps then, this room will feel like a place we know, a place where love looks back at us, winking, because love knows us, because love loves us, because love is us. It's that time of year where the living room can feel empty without the Christmas tree and its lights. That time of year when you've probably picked up the clutter and made a trip or two to donate things you never used, wondering why you had them in the first place. That time of year when cold temperatures keep us indoors and we find ourselves looking around, wondering what we could do to make our homes feel as fresh and new as the frost on our windows. In other words, it's the time we're thinking of redecorating. For some of us, this may mean a large project that requires a hefty amount of time, expenses and elbow grease, a kitchen redo, a room addition, a porch. For others, it means something smaller, a different picture on the wall, a changed quilt on the bed, a rearranged bookshelf. Whether your idea of redecorating is big or small, free or expensive, we think of it as the act of changing or reorganizing things in our home to accommodate new tastes, fresh ideas, or a sense of the seasons we're celebrating. If we're lucky, we get to spend a lot of time in our homes, time relaxing and recharging connecting with and entertaining ourselves and others, feeling comfortable in the spaces where we live. One of the things my family is navigating anew this season after our child's cancer treatments is being at home together. Sharing a space when we all have different likes and dislikes, different tastes and preferences, and different ideas. But I would wager that in this, we are not unique. And I would also guess that everyone has had that moment, like I did before I wrote this poem, where they look around their living room and wonder, why did I choose that color? Or how could I have possibly thought that looked good? For me, this moment wasn't just about seeing bright red in a room of otherwise neutral and soft pastels. 
but also feeling what it represented and wondering, is that really us? Suddenly, I felt as if our family's definition and everyday images of love weren't so shiny, weren't so tidy as the decor on our mantle proclaimed. And then I began to wonder, what does our love look like? Yes, by this point, I'd gone a few steps further than debating whether to take that discount store decor on my mantle to the donation bin or not. A simple swapping of knickknacks or hanging of a different picture on the wall wasn't going to be enough. And so I spent time looking, really looking, not at home decor, but at my family and the things we treasure. One child prefers bright tie-dye colors. One dresses mostly in gray, navy, and black. One chooses to watch musicals, while the other is a fan of Star Wars. One always asks for cookie dough or cookies and cream ice cream, the other for strawberry or vanilla. And their dad, his favorite flavor is mint chocolate chip. His most worn color is blue, and he's likely to be watching the big game. Me, I prefer to read books, take walks, listen to music playlists or poetry podcasts, and I like all the ice cream flavors. But knowing what things we are into, what colors and ice cream flavors we prefer, is only part of us. Maybe they aren't even essential. And of course, they are subject to change. One child once loved the color orange and bananas, neither of which are on the radar today. And yet these things are part of what defines us, part of what influences our everyday choices, including what we display on our desks, bookshelves, and on our mantle. So what is the other part of us? I think this can be, like love, hard to define. And like what we are into, this inside piece of us is always changing. Right now, my kids are teens, experiencing a wide array of changes to their bodies and emotions. As their dad and I enter middle age, our bodies may not be changing quite as much but our emotions continue to ebb and flow in waves. Sometimes those waves flow with our kids, sometimes crash into them. We are learning that living with each other again after our child's cancer can be challenging and that maybe it requires some rethinking, redefinition and redecoration. This redecoration includes the things in our home but it's mostly a transformation of ourselves and our love for each other. We're finding new ways to love each other just as we're figuring out how to live with each other again. We are shedding some things of the past, some pieces of ourselves that are no longer helpful to the life we are living. And isn't that what home and family is all about? Finding a space to live your life in and people to love in that space. I'm looking up at love right now on my living room mantle and considering keeping it. Because maybe it isn't about what love looks like, but instead what it feels like. And every day is a new chance to make love feel like something good, like something you want to live for. But if you look around your living room and find that you want to add a splash of color, a new painting or house plant, a little redecorating might just be the way you find a little love. My child is a patient at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. If you'd like to follow our journey to a cure, visit 
www.caringbridge.org slash visit slash hope for Sadie. To help support children and families suffering from a pediatric cancer diagnosis, go to stjude.org slash donate. You can also help children and families by giving to the Ronald McDonald House Charities at rmhc.org slash donate. The Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation supports children and families suffering from brain tumor diagnoses at curethekids.org slash donate. And the Cure Starts Now raises funds for pediatric brain cancer research. Go to thecurestartsnow.org slash donate. Thank you. Thank you.